You feel my heart every day with so much peace and joy. <laughs> Not enough words to declare that you're amazing. You what make did my Pastor life feel you know as a young believer. Administer oh, that he practiced consistently, that set him apart in life and ministry, and today in his older years. Well, I, I want to thank the Almighty God that uh, I learned very early in my life as a Christian that holiness is a master key. That holiness is a master key to everything. Success in life, success in ministry. I mean, uh, I learned very early in life, in Christian life, that um, holiness, as far as God is concerned, is the nature of God. But holiness, on our own part, is complete obedience to Him. And then I saw that in Exodus 15, verse 26, if I will obey Him completely, I will be healthy. I saw in Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 to 13 that if I obey him completely, I will prosper, I'll be victorious, I'll be promoted, and my promotion nobody will be able to tamper with. So since I learned that one, I had uh, dedicated myself to obey him to the very best of my ability. Amen. Thank you so Amen. much. Uh, second um, question is, uh, you once told a story uh, in one of your minister's conferences of how God asked you to dedicate, if I remember well, three days to just thank and praise him and, that, and how that brought great expansion to the work. Uh, we have constantly seen you practice thanksgiving and praise. You are always with your tambourine. How did thanksgiving and praise revolutionize your prayer life? Well, um, I found that it is easy to link uh, that encounter with what the elders in Africa will say, that if a child is grateful for what he has received yesterday, then he will receive more. Uh, so I spent, by the grace of God, more than 90% of my prayer life just thanking him. Wow. Because he done so much for me, and I find that the more I thank him, the more he does. And that's why everywhere I go, every opportunity I have, I want to thank him. I know where I started from. I know how far he has brought me. Even if he doesn't do any other thing for me now, I can keep on thanking him till I see him in eternity. But I find that the more I thank him, the more he does. So uh, that's a great secret. And I saw I keep on practicing it. It's a great key to progress. So I keep on thanking him and I will continue to encourage others to do the same. All right, sir. Uh, the third question is, the manifestations of God's presence in your meetings, uh, they, are, they are very strong and unusual. Uh, what advice will you give to young ministers when preparing for meetings? Well, I also discovered early in ministry that if we spend time with him in secret, he will spend time with you in the open. In other words, if you will wait upon him before any program, then he will show up. Uh, for example, when I want to prepare for the Holy Ghost night, I make sure that I spend uh, at least a couple of days logged up with him away from my wife, away from my children, just himself and I alone, waiting on him, praising him, praising him and uh, 
seeking his face for the program that is coming. So I don't just uh, walk on the stage on Friday night, uh, having spent all the time talking with my friends. And after I've spent hours upon hours, day and night with him, automatically he responds when I get to the altar. He will come up and begin to manifest his glory. So my advice to all the young ministers is that uh, they shouldn't take God for granted. They should spend time with him in secret so that he can show forth his power and glory in the public. Amen. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, a question here. The redeemed Christian church of God is what we would describe as a first-generation Pentecostal church. But it has successfully adapted with the changing times while it retained the core of the ministry and the message. Uh, is there something you can share blueprint organizations and ministries can adopt from RCCG in order to retain their value across various demographics and age groups? Well, the first thing I would tell any young minister is that he should have uh, the vision of his ministry clearly spelled out. Not in one long, uh, flamboyant uh, statement, but uh, probably they would do it almost mathematically like we have done in the Redeemed Christian Church of God and say, one, we want to make it to heaven. Two, we want to take as many people with us as possible. Three, we want to have a member of the Redeemed Christian Church of God in every family in the world. Uh, then how do we go about this? Well, since we want to make it to heaven, and the Bible says, without holiness, no man shall see God, then we we'll make holiness our lifestyle, etc., etc. In other words, we, we should be specific as to what is our vision and how we intend to reach there. You see, when, when you are playing football, you know where the goal area is. And in order to uh, reach that goal area, you may need to, first of all, pass the ball to the right and then at time pass it to the left. But you know where you are going. Mm -hmm. You want to put that ball between those two goalposts. And those two goalposts don't move. They, they are there. So in every culture, everywhere we go, we find uh, the, the way some people dance uh, in India may be different from the way they dance in Papua New Guinea, etc., etc. And the message of holiness is the same. And once you know where you are going, it doesn't matter where you find yourself. You can maneuver to the right, maneuver to the left. After all, uh, someone said that the reason why gold is such a precious metal is that it learns to bend without breaking. And so have your purpose clearly spelled out. And whatever else may be happening, just make sure you focus on that your goal. All right, sir. Um, um, fifth question. What advice do you have for young churches on developing leaders and structure for tremendous growth? Uh, my advice is simple, that as we do in the Redeemed Christian Church of God, we regard ourselves as one family. The family have a father, the family have a mother, have elder brothers, elder sisters, who have younger ones, but we are a family. No one is a boss. No one is uh, pushing others. The, the, the leader leads by example. We show the children this is the way they're doing it. 
And this is the way we expect you to follow. When I ask my children to fast, before they begin to fast, I will have fasted. They, they see the example in me, and then I ask them to follow the example. That is as simple as that, sir. To do it that way, you will always have your children uh, increasing in number and following your example. All right, sir. Sixth question. Relationships we know are key in life, and God uses people to open doors to, for us. What are the secrets behind you building and maintaining various layers of relationships in your life and ministry, from ministry associates to long-standing sons and, and um, very healthy and beneficial relationships? Well, there is an English proverb that says, make new friends and keep the old. One is silver, hmm. the other is gold. Hmm. The old friends are the gold. The people who knew you, who were with you when you were nothing, they are the gold. The new ones you continue to come across, the new friends you make, particularly after you have become a little better known, they are the silver. But of course, as the years pass, the silver then also will be turning to gold. So you keep on making new friends, but keeping the old. Under no circumstance, must you now say that because you have become big, or you are now well known, you ignore those who were with you at the very beginning. One of the things that had helped us tremendously in the Redemptive Center of God is that the older ones are honored because of their faithfulness at the beginning of this work. And then when the younger ones see that, okay, those who faithfully serve, even when they are old and they can no longer be as active, are not uh, abandoned or thrown away, but they are given tremendous honor, then they relax and they want to throw everything into it, knowing fully well that uh, their future will be guaranteed. That's the principle, sir. All right, sir. Last question, all right. Um, there is a proverb that says, what a young man cannot see from an elevated place, an, older, an elder will see while he's sitting down. So I want to ask you, what trends do you see now in the younger generation that worries you? And what are, what are the things that you are praying about for the younger generation? Well, uh, <laughs> I'm going for the proverb, sir. <laughs> it shows that uh, you must be an elder <laughs> because proverbs come from elders. And we younger ones, we need to come and and drink. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. The, probably the most worrisome thing that I can see is that the uh, majority of younger Christians are beginning to forget the fact that Jesus is coming again. Because if there was anything that kept all of us who are a little older, in the straight and narrow road is the fact that the Lord may return any moment. And so we were always on our toes. In fact, I remember that uh, in my younger days, one of the greetings among the Yorubas is uh, that is, uh, we greet ourselves for looking forward to the second coming of Jesus Christ. And because we were looking forward to his returning any moment, we keep on making sure we don't do anything that will cause us to miss the rapture. But now, uh, people are more uh, concerned about the here and now. 
they are more concerned about prosperity, they are more concerned about fame. They are beginning to forget that this world is not our home, that we are just pilgrims here, and that we are waiting for the bridegroom. Uh, uh, it is to be expected, though, because after all, when the ten virgins went to receive the bridegroom, the Bible said, uh, because the bridegroom said, they all slumbered and slept, all of them, the wise as well as the foolish. And so my prayer is, of course, is that those who are uh, slumbering will wake up soon. Mm -hmm. so that the second coming of the Lord will not uh, catch us on our words. I'm concerned because of uh, misrepresentation of the gospel of grace, which is uh, leading some people to lean for a life of uh, carelessness. Because thank God for grace, it's by grace we are saved, it is by the power of God that we are kept. But the Bible still says that uh, we are called unto holiness. And I'm praying that the Almighty God will help all of us to finish well. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Last thing I'll ask, sir, is I'll ask you to bless us and pray for everybody, particularly that this COVID virus, they will be delivered from it health-wise and also in terms of the economic effect of it, they will be delivered from it also. That's the last thing, sir. And I'm asking viewers, please, we'll go on our knees as he prays for us. Thank you very much. My Father and my God, once again, I want to thank you for this uh, interactive uh, session. I thank you for the little we might have been able to contribute into the lives and ministries of those who are following us as we were talking. But I am praying that all these your children will succeed, not only in ministry, Amen. not only in their families, but they will succeed all the way in life, and that none of them will miss heaven at the last day. Amen. I'm praying, Lord God Almighty, that because of your mercy and because of your children who are crying to you day and night, you will please put an end to this scourge and ask this plague to go away. I'm asking that you, the Almighty God, you will come out mightily on behalf of your children so that they will pass through this terrible period without a single scratch. Amen. I pray that physically you will protect them. Amen. I pray that economically you will prosper them. Amen. I'm praying, Lord God Almighty, that even during this terrible period, somehow your children will come out shining bright, giving glory to your holy name. Amen. Thank you, my Father and my God because we have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise Thank the Lord. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. We are truly grateful for this. Thank you so much. God bless you, sir. Thank you very much for the opportunity, sir. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, sir. people on Instagram besides YouTube and Facebook.